Hey, what's going on guys? How we doing? So today we're going to talk a little bit about base running. Um, in particular, when we have guys on second base, when are we tagging? When are we going halfway? And why are we doing it? I've been surprised um, over the last few years, coaching-wise, of kids not understanding um, you know, a pretty basic idea of when do we want to tag at second, when do we want to get halfway, and then why are we actually doing it, which I think is important so we can start thinking in our heads and not just being robots um, and just doing it because we've been told to do it. So um, here's an example right here in a Red Sox-Blue Jays game from a few few days ago. Um, Pedroia's on second, I believe. Ortiz is up. There's one out. There's a ball hit deep to center field. I'm going to play it and just kind of let you guys watch it for a minute. Okay, so again, there's one out. Ortiz hits the ball pretty deep to center. You can see Pilar going back. You can see with one out, the base runners are getting, basically the man on second base is going halfway. He's reading it. If it falls, he has to score, right? Man on first base is basically copying what the runner at second base is doing, so the runner second second's getting off. The runner at first base is getting off as well. He's going to go as far as he can with still being able to get back if the catch is made. So here's the catch by Pilar. So now both runners are going to retreat and get back to the base. So here's the important thing. Let's talk about why, why we're doing this because I've seen this happen a bunch. Outfields will catch the ball one out and people will yell at the base runners, you got to tag, you got to get to the next base. Here's the basic rule. With nobody out, we're going to... With nobody out, we're going to tag on a fly ball that's taggable, right? If it's not taggable, then you don't have to tag. But on a ball that's taggable, a ball that we can get to the next base if it is caught by the outfielder, we want to get back to the bag, tag, and then once the catch is made, we move up to the next base. Why do we do that? Because we want to get to third base with one out, okay? That's the whole idea. If we can get to third base with one out or less than two outs, I should say. Now we're able to score in a variety of ways. A sacrifice fly, typically early in the game, the infield is going to be playing back. So a ground ball will score us. Um, and then obviously a pass ball, all that stuff. But that comes secondary. The, the biggest thing is a fly ball. So a sack fly and a ground ball, we can get a free run on both of those plays. Okay. Now with one out, now our priority changes. Now we're trying to score, right? It doesn't matter that we get to third base. If this guy catches the ball with one out, it's not as big of a deal getting the third base now because it'll be two outs, and now we can't score on a sack fly. We can't score on a ground ball. And so really the only benefit we have is maybe on a pass ball and we put a little bit more pressure on the pitcher and catcher. Maybe the pitcher doesn't want to throw a breaking ball as much. Um, but we what we don't want to happen on this ball... And this is what I see happen a lot at younger levels. So here's a ball. It's hit deep. This runner goes back and tags. He's standing on second base, right? Then the outfielder drops the ball or can't get to it. And now we can only get to third base, okay? And this guy can only get to second base, right? Versus we get off. Now the ball gets over his head, right? It does. He is not able to catch the ball. This runner scores. This runner has a chance to score if the ball bounces around or if the fence is deep and the guy's got to go get it. And now we've, instead of scoring two runs, we just end up with second and third with one out, right? And now we give them a bunch of different things they can do. They can potentially walk us, get a double play, um, you know, whatever. So those are the keys to running the bases when you're on second base or first and second. With no outs, we are tagging. That is our thought process, tag. With one out, we're getting off the base. We're going halfway. We're trying to score. And if he catches the ball, it's okay. We come right back. Okay. Now, you'll see this at higher levels sometimes with one out and a deep fly ball. Let's say this ball was hit. Boom. Let's say it's hit with more air under it. And it's taken the outfielder back. And he goes back deep. And he gets close to the wall. And then he camps under it. And he's clearly there for the catch. Well, at that point, what you'll see a lot in the big leagues, you, you would see Pedroia get off. And then once he realizes that he's camped and he's definitely going to catch the ball, 
then you would see him retreat to the bag, you'd see him retreat to the bag, and now they would tag up. This guy would move to third base, the runner would start to go and he'd read the throw. The throw should come in the second because there's no play at third, and then this guy would stop and go back. If he sees, if the man on first sees the ball being thrown to third base, this guy can continue to go, especially if the ball's over the cutoff man's head. Or even if the ball is just thrown from that deep all the way to the cutoff, you should be able to beat the throw at the second. So in the big leagues, you'll see that or at higher levels because outfielders will catch balls 99.99% of the time if it's a routine ball, right? But at younger levels, for me, I still don't mind just getting off halfway. If he does make the catch, then we can just retreat. So you got to kind of base it on the level you're at. If fly balls are dropped routinely, if you're playing in Little League, then, yeah, we can go halfway because there's a chance the guy will drop everything. But the higher level you play, the more chances um, that he's going to, if it's a routine ball, he's going to catch that ball every single time. And so we want to get off to make sure with one out. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, you know, I think... It seems elementary, but I've seen it messed up so many times at the high school level this year and last year um, that I think we need to either clarify what we're talking about and what the general rules are, or we just got to practice it more, or we just got to think about it as base runners. Why are we doing what we're doing? You know, when I talk to kids all the time, I say, what do you do? A lot of them don't know, but the guys that do know, they tell me what to do, and then I say, why? And they have no idea. They can't think through it at all. So I think it's important to go through the whole process. Why are we doing it? And so we're not just robots and just doing it because somebody told us to do it. So let me know if you have any questions. Comment in the section below. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, share a video with all your friends, all that good stuff. And we will talk to you later.